At some point in time, almost every manager will question why their boss is seemingly obsessed over such minute and inconsequential details as employee uniforms. Considering all the moving parts in any business, let alone the restaurant business, how employees are dressed seems like it should be pretty low on the priority list. So that begs the question, is it important that your restaurant has an employee dress code or a uniform? If you're working in a food service facility that already has an established dress code, does it really matter that you follow it to the letter? I'm Matt Roberts of Restaurant Ninjas, and today we're gonna to talk all about employee uniforms, dress code, and why they actually matter more than you think. What's up everybody, welcome back to Restaurant Ninjas where I help you learn to run your restaurant and not let your restaurant run you. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you're not gonna wanna miss the future videos that are coming on this channel, especially if you work in the restaurant industry or if you work in any industry as a leader of any level. Owners, GMs, multi-unit managers, how many times have you had the uniform conversations? Even over the little things like shirt tails, name tag, shoe color. How many times have you been met with resistance like I described at the beginning of this video? If you haven't, then you probably either have the best team in the world or you're just not looking hard enough. Either way, I think you're gonna find this video really helpful. I wanna take a few minutes and start by talking about the importance of having a dress code and more importantly, actually enforcing it. Then we're gonna talk about why it's important to have a dress code and what a lack of consistency in your uniform says about your restaurant, both to your internal and external customers. Then I'll go over the types of uniforms I recommend based on the type of restaurant you have and my recommendation on how to handle tattoos and piercings in regards to your uniform policy. So let's start off by defining a dress code versus a uniform policy. I'm not necessarily saying you need to have uniforms. Uniforms can be expensive, they can be cumbersome, they can be annoying, but some kind of a dress code is important. So what I mean by that is like a dress code like Target. They don't say, wear exactly this shirt we give you that says Target and has a bullseye. No, they say wear red. Wear a red top and it looks like black slacks or khaki slacks, so it's really simple. Most people have that stuff in their wardrobe and Target's not paying a ton of money in uniforms. You could go the uniform route if you want though, but it doesn't have to. And that's where I wanna differentiate between uniform and dress code. When deciding between going with a branded uniform and a dress code, it comes down to many factors, but really the biggest ones are price, easy use and ease of operations, and of course the type of concept you have. All right, so why do dress codes matter? Let's start off with leadership in the restaurant, the general manager, assistant managers, shift supervisors. Why does having a dress code and adhering to it matter? First off, it's a really easy win. If you can get everyone in the building in correct uniform, that's a win. It should be an easy one. So that's a great way to start your shift. For me, at least, I look at that as a non-negotiable. Secondly, there's a safety aspect. Some parts of your uniform include PPE, whether it's gloves, whether it's a leather apron for dishwashers, non-slip shoes. And then another part of it is to make sure you have an element of branding and marketing going on. To your customers, Uniforms are important because it helps them distinguish from customer and employee. Let me tell you, I stopped wearing blue shirts to Walmart because people keep asking me to get stuff off the top shelf for them. It also does a really nice job projecting professionalism to your customers. As far as your employees go, they might complain about it, but they actually, if you handle it correctly, they like it because it helps them feel included and makes them feel part of a team if you're giving out shirts or anything branded. And it also projects professionalism. It makes them feel good about themselves. So your employees who are, you know, broke, don't have to go out and buy a shirt or wear a crappy looking shirt and feel crappy because you're giving them a nice one. So that's one of the benefits of having a uniform versus a dress code. But all of these are reasons why having a dress code matters in the first place. As far as recommendations for a dress code, here's what I recommend. If you're in fast food or fast casual, think McDonald's, Panera, Bread, Chipotle, that type of uh, concept, keep it simple. My recommendation, Get a branded hat, a couple of different versions so your employees have a chance to choose which one they like based off of their personality, and that's it. Keep it really simple. Tell them what color t-shirt you want and what type of jeans you want. You can say just blue jeans, no fades, no rips. Be as specific as you can be, or you could go khakis, or you could go black slacks, but keep it really simple. Ideally, go with things they have in their wardrobe already. So black t-shirts are pretty easy. Blue jeans are pretty easy. And if they don't have a black t-shirt in their wardrobe, really simple, just go to Walmart and buy a 10 pack for like $20 and keep them on hand. Or have some branded t-shirts available for new hires and anybody who actually earns them. And if they don't have them, 
rather than having to give your full-time people out a million uniforms, a black t-shirt's fine. To go along with that, I do recommend making sure you have non-slip shoes, and I do think name tags are important for employees. However, there's nothing worse than the name tag with the label printed off the P-Touch. Figure something else out better. Either do handmade name tags. We used to do that when I worked at Panera so the employees could express themselves. We gave them a little art kit. It was arts and crafts time, everything but macaroni necklace pieces. Or make a partnership with a local engraver. I can tell you from experience that the engraver by me charges somewhere in the area of $3 in engraving which isn't really that bad if you're hiring a lot of people even. It's not a big price to pay, especially if you're not paying for uniform shirts. Just get nice name tags. All right, let's step it up. I'm not your casual dining, your Applebee's, your TGI Fridays of the world. Here's what I recommend. Front of house, same idea, single color shirt, except we're gonna tech it up a notch and go with a polo shirt so there's a collar. Pants, instead of letting them wear jeans, do khakis or do black slacks. Stay with the non-slip shoes. That's a non-negotiable for every position. And same deal with the name tag. This is where I'd really consider going with that local engraving shop. When we get into fine dining, then things get a little different. So for your servers, I recommend a button down dress shirt and probably a tie also. If you're in fine dining, you want them to look really good. Black slacks to go with it. And then your kitchen staff should have chef wear, chef jacket, chef pants, whites, whatever you wanna go with. Let's talk about tattoos and piercings for a minute. So this one's a big taboo and a lot of old school managers say, no, no tattoos, no piercings, cover up your tattoos. And then you end up with a guy who has tattoos on his arms that aren't offensive wearing a sweatshirt in July. That doesn't make sense. Listen, here's the new reality. Tattoos are on the majority of the population. So discriminating not even just discriminating, but choosing to not let someone work for you or not make working for them for you as easy as any other buddy who doesn't have tattoos is kind of stupid. So unless they have tattoos on their face or have tattoos that are potentially offensive, let them work with tattoos. Let them show their tattoos. Again, if they have, I don't know, like the Nazi star here, or if they have the word like luscious tattooed across their forehead, I've seen it, then maybe you don't want them to work with a tattoo but otherwise it's, it's not a big deal. Piercings are a little bit different. The world hasn't quite caught up to them. Personally, I don't have a problems with my employees wearing piercings. The problem comes in the form of the Board of Health. Some Board of Health people are very specific about earrings only, earrings can't fall out, but nose rings can. I don't think that's true. I think eventually that the health code's gonna be adapted. And when it is, and when that you can get away with it, I highly suggest allowing your employees to have facial piercings because it's a big fad. I mean, it's just kind of normal now. A teenage girl with a nose ring is about as normal now as a teenage girl with an earring 30 years ago. Don't limit your already limited talent pool by saying, I don't want anybody with piercings. And don't make these two mistakes. Don't ask them to put a small bandaid over it because it looks stupid. And don't ever let them put the clear plungers in. My old uh, health inspector used to say, hey, why don't you have them do this? And I'd be like, because the plungers can fall out a hell of a lot easier than an earring can. They have a back, the plunger doesn't. Doesn't that seem crazy to you? So if you work in a place with a dress code and a member of senior leadership walks in, a CEO, RVP, a district manager even, what does a lack of adherence to that uniform policy say about you and your restaurant? Well, it doesn't say good things. I'll tell you from experience, it looks like it's a lack of discipline. To me, if I walk in and I see that you can't get your employees to put their hats forward, keep their shirts tucked in and have name tags on, I wonder how much of a quality leader you are. I start to wonder about your attention to detail. And in fairness, most of the time, it's true. Leaders who can't get people to dress correctly also can't execute the more important things correctly. It's a sign of sloppy operations. What other standards are being half executed? Thought I was gonna say a bad word, but I didn't. This is just yet another reason to make sure that you have your uniforms buttoned up. It might seem silly, but it really is important. So make this a non-negotiable for your team, build the habit, and you won't be talking about it every day once you build that habit. It'll just become a piece of verifying instead of talking and talking and talking. As I always say on this channel, make sure you know the why when they say, why does this matter? You say, hey, listen, if we can't get you to wear your clothes correctly, how can I get you to do anything else? We need this. So question of the day, what are your thoughts on this? Specifically, if you have a dress code, how important do you think it is that you adhere to it? Let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to each and every one of you. Hope you're having a fantastic day and no matter how bad things might seem, remember, it's a beautiful day to be alive. Later.